four of the best chefs in Britain are on the hunt for their perfect partner. Three amateur home cooks are here to prove they have what it takes to be paired with the best in the business for the cooking experience of a lifetime. I'm not really sure it's going to be relaxing today. No. <laughs> Each day, a different chef will choose their perfect partner from three talented home cooks. This food is very posh. Oh, oh my God, it's very posh food. Then all four pairs will go head to head in our Friday final cooking for culinary royalty, Pierre Kaufman. What impressed me with food is the end result. The test is the most important. The professional chef's reputations are on the line. This is my idea of perfection. And the amateur home cooks have a lot to live up to. This is Yes Chef. Hello and welcome to Yes Chef. Let's see who's cooking in the kitchen today. First up, it's Maryam Gohar Mehera from Iran. She's a full-time mum living just outside Chester. I'm relaxed and I can't wait to see their look when they're trying my dish. Next, it's Peter Miles. He's the managing director of a technology company in Lancashire. I like to cook really homely food, steaks, stews, etc. But when I'm trying to impress friends, I get them around for a tasting menu. And finally, it's Craig Edmund from South Wales. He's a director of a software company. People would describe my cooking as varied. I rarely cook the same dish twice. Creativity and innovation are my strong points. My weakness is my cleanliness. My wife's always having to clean up after me. Our cooks are ready to go, so let's meet today's chef. Today's chef is Amandine Shano. Amandine is the executive chef at the Rosewood in London. She defines her modern French cooking style as fresh, honest and intricate. What defines me is simplicity. The most important thing is to have the freshest, best ingredients to work with. Having worked with the likes of Alain Ducasse and Jean-Francois Pierge, to name a few, Amandine knows exactly what she's looking for in today's home cooks. Well, in my kitchen, there's no space for messy chefs people lose the temper. As chefs, I think that we all are really competitive. So, yeah, of course I'm going to win. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to Yes Chef. Now, Amandine, you're going to be picking one of our home cooks to be your partner in this week's Friday final. What are you going to be looking for? Well, obviously, as someone who's really into food, um, great sense of organisation, great sense of uh, seasoning, and, of course, someone who's really having fun. Perfect. So, cooks, you've got 45 minutes to create your best dish for Amandine. Now, she will be watching your every move in the kitchen <laughs> to see how you cope. And at the end, obviously, it's the all-important taste test. So, Amandine, any last tips for our cooks? Have fun. Brilliant. OK, well, let's get on with it. Right, cooks, you've got 45 minutes. Good luck, because your time starts now. So our cooks are off. They're going all out to win over Amandine with their signature dish. Today, Craig's chosen lamb with an Indian crust, served with sagaloo and mango chutney. And although he's cooked this dish before... I've cooked this dish about, about twice. Uh, both were really, really good. It took me about 40 minutes, so I'm feeling quite comfortable so far. This is the first time his food has been judged by a professional chef. I'm really interested in seeing uh, what she makes of it, really. Yeah. Over at the green station, Mariam has opted for a traditional Iranian chicken dish served with saffron rice and Barbary jam. I chopped the onion, mixed it with black pepper, and I'm going to start cooking it for 20 minutes. This dish is a firm family favourite and Mariam's cooked it so many times she's unfazed by the competition. I've cooked this dish over 100 times, so this is not going to be last time. And everyone loves it, so quite confident about what I'm cooking today. On the red team, Peter's chosen to make a fillet of beef on a bed of garlic spinach, topped with a potato galette served with parsnip puree and a red wine and port jus. I'm a real meat eater, and uh, the good steak's really lovely. My big question is the, is the gravy, whether I'm going to get that reduced down or not in time, but fingers crossed, everything else is looking OK. Hi, 
Peter. Hi. Hi. How, we, how are we? I'm good. I'm good, thank you. Just making a, a gravy here. And what do you get the mushrooms for? They're going to just add some depth to the to the gravy. Do you cook a lot at home? Or... Uh, yeah, I do. I find it a, way, a good way of relaxing. I, I travel around sure. the country a lot, so when I get home, it's nice. I'm not really to... sure it's going to be relaxing today. No, <laughs> no, 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 OK, OK. But, no, uh, try and relax. Try, try and, and enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. But your wife's a vegetarian, she, isn't she? She is. I've been practising and practising, and uh, you can only eat so much fillet steak, so the dogs have been very happy. Oh, I bet yeah. they have been. <laughs> Lucky dogs. Lucky yeah, dogs. Absolutely. OK, well, good luck. Thank you very much. And we'll see you shortly. Super. See you later. Hi, Mariam. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm very well. Thank you. Good. Chicken is in the pressure cooker. The next thing is my rice. OK, so tell us about the dish. Is it a... It's the traditional Iranian dish. We call it Zeresh Polo. So this food is very posh. So everyone... <laughs> <laughs> it's very posh food. So I brought these... Um, nuts from Iran, and this is Zeresh. It's actually come from Iran. Let's have can I try? Right? Yes, of course you can try. This is very fresh. It's just a slice of... Mm. Lovely. So I'm going to make a little jam with this barberry and then put this one on top. So mm. this one's fresh on top. It yes. <laughs> oh, it's all going <laughs> off in here. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, let me to carry on and concentrate. Yes, thank you. Good thank you very much. Hi, Craig. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How's it going? It's good. I've got my, uh, my potatoes are cooking now. Can we have a look? Yeah. Ooh. Mm. So it's going to be a sagaloo. We've got some spinach just uh, wilting in here. Lovely. And then we've got uh, a nice piece of lamb rum, uh, Indian crust. So, we've yeah. got lo lots of lovely spices and herbs. Yeah, yeah. It smells so good. Yeah, it's already. And there's a, there's a poppadom in the crust as well. Okay. So, instead of breadcrumbs. Yeah. Brilliant. Mm. Okay. Great. Well, good luck. Yeah, thank you. We'll let That's you carry nice. on. Yeah. Can't yeah. wait to eat. <laughs> So, as the cooks get stuck in, Peter's slightly worried he's not going to finish in time. I've got a lot to do still. Um, hopefully, we should be OK. Peter, he seems to be super organised. Mm. Really steady, really calm. There we go. That's better. Fantastic. Is this, do you think it's quite simple? Or... It can seem to be simple, but I think that he's going to have a bit of a twist at the right. end of it. Well, we'll I see. think. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> I put a little bit too much pepper, but with the mixture of lime and a saffron, it's fine. Mariam is making a traditional Iranian dish. I wonder if he's going to twist it a bit to make it more um, modern, maybe to add a bit of her style to a real traditional recipe. Mm -hmm. I don't know a lot about Iranian food, so I'm really curious about it. Oh, good. Yeah. So far, it's all going to plan. I'm feeling pretty good, feeling pretty good. Craig, there's a lot of prep around and a lot of flavour. I think it's got the right mixture of complexity, but also being something that can get done within 45 minutes. I'm not really into lamb, so... <laughs> Don't tell him. <laughs> uh, but I'm sure with all the spices on it, it could be really interesting. OK. Yeah. I think you've got some good contestants yeah, out there. definitely. Can't wait. <laughs> How's it going over there, Peter? It's all right. So you've got enough time to cook that? Mm, not sure about it at the moment. <laughs> it's a big piece of fillet. It is. It is a big bit of fillet. I better get on. <laughs> Cooks, you've had half an hour. You've got 15 minutes left. 15 minutes to go, guys. Oh. Ooh. It's warm. You OK? Yeah. So that's going to go in for four minutes. And I'm going to turn it halfway through so it cooks evenly from the, yeah. in the oven. Good. Peter's racing against the clock. But Marianne's concerned she's over-seasoned her chicken dish. Too much uh, pepper. Too much pepper, did you say? Yeah. Too much pepper, it's got like hell You put too much in. Yeah. Oh, no, why? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And Peter's not sure he'll have enough time to reduce his sauce. Are you not happy with it? No, I think it's just a little bit too... too uh, Need it reduced uh, yeah, a little I bit do, more. Yeah, I unfortunately. Time's running out fast for the cooks, and Amaldine's interested in seeing how Craig's getting on with his lamb. Just want to have a look before you. So this everything. is just about to go into the oven. It's, it's pan fried. It's got its uh, Indian spice crust. Mm, it smells lovely. She's 
just two minutes left. Two minutes to go. Mariam's first to plate up, and not far behind her is Craig. But Peter looks like he'll be leaving it right down to the wire. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Time's up. Wow. Stop cooking. <laughs> oh, that was so close. <laughs> right, it's time to taste. <laughs> First into the tasting room is Craig. He's serving lamb with an Indian crust, served with sagaloo and a mango chutney. How was the challenge for you? It was very good. Yeah, very good. I really enjoyed it. Can't wait to try it. Yes, let's, let's taste. Did you try it yourself? I did. Yeah, you could have put a bit more salt in, yeah. in the lamb. There's a real spice to your yeah. mango chutney. Mm. Yeah, okay. really lovely. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Happy? Love that. <laughs> and the cooking is perfect. The cooking of the lamb is cooked perfectly. Perfect. Yeah. Happy days. Thank okay. you very much. Oh, well done. Well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> wow. Wow. I thought it went really well. I was really, really pleased with the feedback. Did you enjoy that? Really much, actually. Yeah. The chutney is just fantastic. Cooking is perfect. Um, I would just have had a bit of salt on the lamb. On the last bit. Finish it. <laughs> <laughs> you had the potato balancing everything, and that was really interesting. I hope I've done enough to impress them so far. I think I think I have. Next up is Mariam with her traditional Iranian chicken dish served with saffron rice and a Barbary jam. Here you go. Lovely. Thank you. It looks lovely. Thanks. Thank okay. you. It's really, really good. Yeah? I really liked it. I really liked the balance of um, the sweetness of the little jam that you've made and the pepper makes everything really well. Um, well, the chicken is maybe just a bit dry because you plate it so early that actually, you know, it gave it the time to release all the juice and, uh, and all the sauce. Okay. But apart from this, it's really lovely. Well done. Thank you. Are you happy? Yes, I am. Thank good. you. Good. Thank you very much. I think it went well, but they were unhappy with my chicken. That's lovely. Mm. How was that dish for you? It was pretty good, though I think that the saffron is a bit overwhelming. Mm. I think that she didn't really manage her time really well. I've done this dish so many times before, so I know from now I need to put the chicken last things on the dish. <laughs> and finally, it's Peter's dish of the day. Fillet of beef on a bit of garlic spinach, topped with a potato galette with parsnip puree and a red wine and port jus. There we go. Did you enjoy the challenge? Uh, I did, I did, but time ran away, if I'm afraid. Great. Great. It's just a bit of pity that the jus yeah. is not reduced enough, mm. but I really like the, um, the spinach are perfect for me. I um, really like the puree. Just ran out of time. Time did run away. It did. But it did. are you pleased? I'm very pleased with what I did. I, it was just time, that was all. Okay, yeah. all right. So thank, thank you. you so thank much. you so much. Okay. Wow. Mm. It's massively different cooking here than practicing at home, how much time you actually let drift. I love it. I think that he's been a bit challenged to manage his time to get the perfect gravy reduced mm. and the crispy potato. I'm most disappointed about my jus because actually at home I practiced that so many times it was really good. And this one just, it was a failure, let's be honest. Simple things are the most complicated uh, to get the perfect cooking, the perfect seasoning, the perfect gravy. 
Is anybody standing out at the moment? I think that I'm starting to make my mind, yes. Oh, OK. Well, hold that thought, cos we've still got your skills test to go. Let's do it. Let's go. How did you all find the first challenge? Yeah, it was Hard good. Work. Yeah. Hard work. Hard work. Well, it's probably going to get a little bit harder now, cos <laughs> Amadine has set you a test to see who's got the skills she's looking for. So, Amadine, what are we doing? We're going to prep a squab. Ooh. Oh. So it's a squab, it's a, a pigeon. Right. It's not complicated, but I just want to see how you behave with the knife. Basically, when you're able to butcher it properly, you yeah. can do exactly the same with a hen, with a, um, a woodcock. Any bird. Yep. Chicken, anything. So it's a really good skill to have. Basis. Yeah, OK. Well, let's get on with it. OK. So, first thing... <laughs> Gonna burn it a bit. OK. This is just to make sure that there's no little feather remaining. Ooh, hello. <laughs> if there's feathers on there, is that a it's massive not, problem? But it's not really uh, nice to eat. But this way, you can make sure that there's no little feather remaining. Secondly, what I'm going to ask you is to take the legs out and take the fillet. It's really simple. OK? Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, for the leg, use your finger to take the meat from the bone. Can you feel it with the knife? You can feel the it bone with is. the knife and you can feel it with your, with your finger as well. OK. Are you cutting the bone out or are you cut around it? There's no, there's no strength at all. OK. You're just the pulling out. the legs out and... And then cut round them. That's it. OK. So, you see there's nothing left on the bone? No. No meat? And then secondly, the fillets. So right down the centre, yeah, along the bone. Exactly. Okay. There's a small bone here. And once again, you just follow the bones. So you want as much meat off the bone as possible. Yeah, there shouldn't be any meat on the bone left okay. after. In your restaurant, how many people would have to prepare? These, or how many would you do? Yeah, um, actually, at the Rosewood, we can do up to uh, 500 columns. So <laughs> imagine that you have 500 to do. Wow. You need to be really efficient for this. So then the breast is off? The breast, the breast is off, everything's off. There's nothing remaining on the bone, OK? And here you still have the little fillet attached, mm -hmm. OK? And then you can just trim it a bit. So have you done this before? D no. Nope. I've done similar things. Have you? Yeah. So partridge. OK. I wish I had now. <laughs> <laughs> so here you have the bones on one side, the legs and the fillets. Easy. Excellent. Yeah. OK. <laughs> How do you feel, guys? Oh, well, I'll try my best, but I don't think. <laughs> no, you'll be fine. Yeah. Come on, be confident. Don't, don't try to cut, don't try to put the strength on the knife. There's no use. As you see, it's just following the bones. Yeah. OK. How long are you going to give our cooks? We're going to be nice. We're going to give them 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Confident, guys? Come give on. It a go. Let's give do it a this. Go. Ready? OK, we'd like to make your way back to your stations. Okay. We'll begin. OK. The cooks are off to a fiery start. They'll have to work skillfully and methodically so not to damage the delicate meat. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting stuck in and see how we get on. Knife skills are all important in the kitchen to be able to work quickly, efficiently and with a level of artistic flair. I use game quite a bit, so I do um, often end up with a small bird that needs to be trimmed, so fingers crossed. Whilst Craig might be used to handling game birds, Mariam is unfamiliar with the process. Don't lose a to turn it upside down. This way. The kitchen's in silence as the cooks tackle this intricate challenge, as a slip of the knife could cost them in points, as well as fingers. Uh, there could have been worse challenges. The Friday final brings many challenges, so Amandine is looking for a cook who isn't squeamish and can take all aspects of cookery in their stride. So this is the first time I've actually done this, so it's... Uh... Quite interesting for me, and I don't feel too bad about it, actually. Two minutes left, two minutes to go. 
The cooks will need to present a neat display of breasts and legs with a clean carcass, as any waste of the tender meat will count against them. I'm going well. I've never done it before, so I'm trying my best. So I don't know. I can see a little bit meat left in the bones, but I'm trying my best. It's a lot easier than I was thinking, so it's good. I think when I'm going home, I'm going to practice a lot on this one. Pretty good. I think there's, there's, there's a tiny bit of meat left still on the bone, but pretty close. I'm pretty happy. Uh, my, I'm quite comfortable with my knife skills. I'm, I'm very cautious, obviously, for safety. Um, I don't do a lot of poultry, this type of stuff, but I'm feeling OK about this today, actually. I think I left a little bit meat on the bones, so I'm not sure. I've done and half done it. I'm happy with that, yeah. This challenge could have been a lot worse, so I'll take that. <laughs> right, that's it. Time's up. Step away from your squabs. Let's see how you've got on. It's the moment of truth. One of our home cooks will be leaving the competition after this round, and Amandine will now judge the squabs to firm up her decision. Did you enjoy the challenge? Yes. Yep. Yeah, I yeah. did. I did. Well, you've all done really well. Thanks. But obviously, you're going to inspect closely. So let's start. Do you want to start with this one? Yeah. OK. So um, on this one, this size, this side is OK. But on this one, we have a lot of flesh left over. Um, uh, but you have the small fillet. So not too bad. Thank you. Peter. So on this one, the little fillet disappeared. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's still on the bone. There's a piece left here as well. But um, was it the first time for you? Yep, first time. Mariam, so the bone is not too bad. There's still a bit of flesh here, left over. There's a lot of marks of knife on the meat. Um, it's not really neat. Yeah. Obviously, it was the first one for you yes. as well. Yeah, it was the first time. <laughs> Good. Okay, thank you. Right, guys, thank you so much. If you'd like to go back to the waiting room, we will see you shortly. But okay. very well thank done. You. Thank, thank you. you. Brilliant. Thank, thank you. you. Amandine can only choose two home cooks to go through to the final round. They all did a pretty good job. Yep. A couple of them, it was the first time. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not too bad for us. first okay. one. I think I did all right, actually. I felt comfortable with the knife, and once you understand where, you know, where you've got to cut, um, I think it was okay. I should have been a surgeon. I've never done it before. This one was my first experience. I tried my best, and I don't know what's going to happen, so I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> I thought it went okay. I somehow ended up with a little piece of the fillet attached to one of the legs, but I think I did okay. So, have you got an idea of who you might be sending home? I think I've made my mind. Oh, OK. Yeah. All right, well, let's go break the news. Firstly, I'd like to say well done to all three of you. You've been absolutely brilliant. Unfortunately, one of you does have to leave the competition now, and Amadine has made her mind up. So, Amadine, it's over to you. I'm really sorry I had to make a decision, but uh, I based my decision on, first, uh, the way that you've been organised with your recipe and the skills challenge to me. So... Miriam, I'm sorry, but you'll have to go. That's OK. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. I'm sad. Yeah, I'm sad I'm leaving. Did you enjoy yourself? Yes, I really enjoyed it. It was a different experience. Really enjoyed the feeling coming to be part of the show. You've had a good time. Yes, I did have a good time. A thank well you. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. Well done. And congratulations. Yes, thank Both you. Both next round. Thank you. So, just two home cooks remain. Software director Craig... I don't know as much to choose between us in the butchery, so I'm just really glad that I was one of the two to get through. And managing director Peter... I wasn't expecting to go through. I'm really determined to go on now and, and see if I can get to the final on Friday. It's now time for our third and final round. Now, our home cooks have been given all the ingredients to one of Amandine's signature dishes. They'll have one hour to identify all the ingredients and to create a dish of their own. So, for you at home, here's what Amandine's chosen. Amandine's chosen langoustine, mousseron mushrooms, 
spring onions, peas, broad beans, coriander, lemon and egg, ginger and carrot, and wonton sheets. Easy enough with Amandine's French flair, but what will our home cooks make? Right, cooks, you've got one hour. Reveal your ingredients, because your time starts now. Good luck. Peter and Craig are thrown by Amandine's ingredients, which they think contain a mixture of Oriental and Italian flavours. Pasta. What do you reckon, Pete? <laughs> I'm just trying to work out <laughs> if these have been pre-rolled or not. But, uh... yeah. I'm a bit confused because I've got a bit of Oriental here. <laughs> yeah. And then I've got a bit of... I don't know what here, yeah, so exactly. I can't decide. I think I think I know what all the ingredients are. Um, yeah, it's, it seems a bit of an unusual combination. Ever confident, Craig is first to jump in and make a start. Hi, Craig. Hi. Hey. Made a start? I've made a start. I've, uh, I'm still not 100% certain what I'm making, but uh, I thought I'd get, get the uh, mushrooms frying. Have you identified? Yeah, it's fresh pasta. OK. So I'm going to turn that into sort of matchsticks, like a linguine. OK. Well, good so luck. So langoustine carbonara. Very interesting, actually. Very interesting. Yeah. Craig's fresh pasta is, of course, a wonton wrapper more commonly found in Chinese cooking. Hi, Peter. Hi. What are you doing? Good. I'm going to cook the longestines with some um, coriander, some ginger, some spring onion and a bit of lemon juice. And I'm going to serve that with an open ravioli of mushrooms and with a butter sauce. OK. okay. I've noticed that you're trying everything. Good. So this is, you think, it's pasta? I... Yeah. I'm going to go for it. Okay. OK. Brilliant. OK, well, yeah. good luck. Thank you. Great. Both our cooks are off on an Italian odyssey. Craig making linguine and Peter a ravioli. Slightly unsure, they sound each other out to check they're on the right track. Are you going for the ravioli then, uh, Pia? <laughs> Not saying. <laughs> <laughs> Italian food is always about letting the ingredients speak for themselves. But this Italian food will probably speak with a Chinese accent. So let's talk about Craig and what he's planning to do. Do you think he can achieve carbonara? I think it could work. Really? Actually, yeah. Even with a bit of ginger and um, coriander, it could be a bit of a twist to the proper Italian one. Yeah. But it could be nice. Yeah. And what about with the wonton wrappers? Would that work, though? He has to be clever in the way that he's going to cook it, but... I think he thinks he's work. adamant that it is just fresh pasta. Yeah. I think what I would have preferred to have made uh, a little lasagna. Peter also thinks he has pasta, so he's going to do, like, an open ravioli. Yeah. I'm, I'm really looking forward to see what he's going to do as a sauce, actually, mm. and actually both of them. There's no, um... It's missing a liquid. It is missing a liquid, yeah. Whilst Peter is pondering his sauce, Craig has stormed ahead, knocking together a dish that features only a few of Amadine's ingredients. Looks like you're almost done, right? I'm almost done, yeah. Wow, that was quick. <laughs> have you not used all the ingredients, have you? Uh, well, I've, I've, I've used a decent I've used selection. The pea. You've not used I've the peas? Used, I haven't used the peas, yeah, no. Did you really use the beans and I didn't the use peas. the beans and the peas, no. Yeah. I think that's good. But, of course, these are the complete ingredients that make one of Amandine's signature dishes. Craig is nearly finished. And he has yeah. 35 minutes to go. I think it's far too much in advance. And everything is going to stuck together. I decided not to use the peas and the beans just because, I think, flavour-wise, um, not mushrooms and peas together. Whilst Craig's nearly finished his dish in record time, Peter's concerned that, as in round one, he may struggle to finish at all. After this morning's you know, running out of time. I'm hoping that I'm actually going to be OK at the moment, which is I'm, why I'm trying to keep it simple. But most importantly to me is to get it on the plate on time. Over on the yellow station, a delighted Craig has finished his dish with half an hour to kick back and relax. You're finished. I'm finished. You've yeah. got half an hour to go. I know. 
I think the ingredients will speak for themselves. I think that I think that's a good expression of Langusty. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> quick. <laughs> but quick doesn't necessarily mean good. You finished already? Yeah. Yep. Um, I don't want to overcomplicate it. That was quick. Yep. I better get a move on. <laughs> Peter speeds up his game, leaving Craig to assess his handiwork. This is, this is my idea of perfection. Peter's really pushing the boat out, trying to incorporate all of Amandine's ingredients, whilst Craig has time to reflect. I'm, I, I'm concerned that my dish is a little bit simple. And reflect. And reflect. Intrigued by Peter's busy workload, Craig's desperate to know what he's up to. What are you doing there? Making a just, just cooking up. Get some flavour out of okay. the fish, the heads. The... What are you going to do with the langoustine? What are you going to do with the egg? Cooks, you've got 15 minutes to go. Well, Peter, you've got 15 <laughs> minutes to go. Thank you. <laughs> we can just stand here and watch. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Relax. I'm enjoying this. Oh, good. Peter has decided to roast his langoustine, making a stock with the shells and heads to create a sauce for his open ravioli. How are you doing on time, Peter? Another ten minutes, if I've got it, we'll be done. Craig spends the final ten minutes of the competition convincing himself that his dish is up to scratch. Yeah, I mean, even looking at the ingredients that are left, I don't think any of them will improve the dish. OK, well, I'm nearly finished now. Just bringing the sauce together. Pasta's nearly done. I'm going to then plate up and we'll be ready to serve. Yeah, I'm surprised I've finished on time. I'm probably a bit nervous from this morning. So, both cooks have finished at opposite ends of the timescale. But what will Amandine think of their end results? Will it be a case of the hare and the tortoise? Well, they've both beaten the clock and finished early, so it's time to taste. <laughs> First to be judged is Craig, who's made langoustine carbonara with mushrooms and spring onions. Did you enjoy the challenge? I did, yes. Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. And you identified all the ingredients OK? Yeah. The pasta? is actually a wonton sheet. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's been on the same family anyways. So tell us what you've made. A langoustine carbonara. Good. OK, all right, well, let's taste. I think it works well, to mm. be fair. Um, yeah, it's really tasty. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thanks very much. If you'd like to go back to the waiting room for the last time, thank you. We'll thank see you. you shortly. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, thank Craig. You. I think flavour-wise, I think I think mine was spot on. It was a tasty dish. Yeah, it was. But I mean, with langoustine, onions, and mushroom, you can't be wrong anyway. So. Well, the egg. Mm, that's really good. For me, langoustine is an expensive product, and you don't want to waste it. He said it, it didn't need yeah, it didn't the need, head for the he sauce. Should have done it. But he should have done. Yeah. There, there are a lot of interesting flavours on there, but if she uses them all, I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Last into the tasting room is Peter. He's roasted the langoustine, serving them with an open ravioli of mushrooms, peas, beans, and a langoustine sauce. Did you enjoy that? I did, it was great. So you identified all the ingredients? I did, think? yeah, I did, yes. Yeah. What about the pasta? Oh, OK. <laughs> I... <laughs> all right, well, let's taste. Let's try it. It's really good. I really like the heat of the ginger and the acidity of the lemon. It brings a bit of freshness to it. Good job. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. It's not overcooked. Well, well done, Peter. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank We'd you. like to go back to the waiting room for the be. last time. Lovely. We'll see you shortly. Here we go. Mm. 
I've actually really surprised myself. Yeah, after this morning's effort, I'm really, really pleased again. I really like the fact that he used the hairs to no waste hairs. Mmm. That sauce is really interesting. Mm. At the end of it, the ginger and the lemon that you put at the very end brings a lot of freshness to the plate, so it's definitely a good one. I was really, really pleased with the comments. Very, very proud. So you've seen them in all three challenges. Have you got an idea of who you might pick for mm. the Friday final? Don't know yet. Oh, you still don't know. Still is it heating. <laughs> well, that's fine. I mean, you don't have to decide yet because we get to now see what you make with those ingredients. OK, let's go. Let's go. So, guys, this is the best bit, because you get to sit back and relax now while Amadine shows us what she does with those ingredients. What are you making? So we're going to prep some langoustine ravioli uh, with some beans and bread beans. Perfect. OK, take it away. OK, so we'll use the head for the sauce. You were pleased to see Peter use the head. Yes, for me it's really important when you're using such uh, an expensive product like that to use every part of it. Do you like cooking with seafood? I love cooking with seafood. Seafood, vegetables, fish. I'm not really a meaty person. Fiddly. <laughs> <laughs> I know, they are tough. So here you have the little... Just to take a rid of. Well, how long have you been at the Rosewood now? Yeah. Um, it's been three years now. Wow. Time's Has just... that gone quick? Time flies, but yeah, really. OK, instead of um, adding the butter at the end of it, like you, what you've done, actually, to thicken the sauce, we're going to put it since the beginning. Show it in small pieces to get the best of it. Did you originally train as a doctor? <laughs> Not really as a doctor, actually, a pharmacist. Oh, right, OK. Yeah. When I quit the university, I worked in a pizzeria as a waitress. Wow. And believe it or not, but I really loved it. <laughs> and that's how you got into cooking? Yeah, definitely. So the idea is to have the carrots, um, really carrots broth as a soup, so quite thinly. Just keep this for the very end, because it's always a bit fresh. Up. With the longer steams, you, apart from the little bit you took out the tail, can you use absolutely everything in the yeah. head and everything? So, yeah. Yeah. How do you come up with your dishes? Do you work with the other chefs or do you it's, experiment? There's really no rules. No. Sometimes you have a really clear idea in your mind. Sometimes it's a thing that you need to work on longer. Um, obviously, I try to have the team involved. It can be a mix of really different things. Yeah. So the egg was actually just a glue. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't far off, Pete, with your ravioli. Oh. No. <laughs> and you know what I really like when you're putting ravioli, well, langoustine like that in ravioli, is that you have all the juice from the langoustine, which is going to remain in mm. the ravioli yeah. itself. Why would you use wonton wrappers instead of pasta or homemade pasta? It's really simple. Um, you don't get a messy bench because you have flowers everywhere. So, <laughs> so with the bread being what you forgot, is actually to take the skin off. <laughs> what I really like is that all the garnishes, they almost have the same shape inside. Yeah. And size, so it's really nice. And the ginger. Why do you put it in? Not why don't you put it in the beginning? What I really like is the freshness of it. Oh, okay. And if you cook it, you're going to lose it. I reckon that is it's enough. When you have such a beautiful langoustine like that, be careful not to overcook it. We have a little garnish. Really fresh. Lovely colours. 
Add a bit of the raw spring onion, a bit of ginger, a bit of lemon. That looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Well done. Right, this is the best, best, best Happy bit. Days. You get to taste. Go on, then. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, you've got a lot. You've got the ginger. Mm. Smashed it. Absolutely smashed it. Mm. Mm. Well, it is time now to declare your winner and who you're going to pick as your partner in the Friday final. But before you do, let's have a quick recap of what our cooks made earlier. In the first round, the flavours in Craig's lamb were a huge success. In the second, his well-trimmed squab won him through. And his langoustine carbonara was a simple classic, but full of flavour. I think flavour-wise, I think, I think mine was spot on. I hope I've done enough. Peter left it down to the wire in round one. He had success with preparing the squab in the second. And in the final round, his langoustine ravioli was a triumph. But what will be the outcome? It's really difficult to say whether I've done enough to win this, but I really do hope so, because I would love to be back on Friday. Firstly, a massive well done to both of you. You've been brilliant today, and I hope you've enjoyed yourselves. Sadly, only one of you can go through to the Friday final as Amadine's partner, and she has made her mind up, so it's over to you. Unfortunately, you have to make a choice. I made my choice on two things, um, wastage and time management. So I'm going to take Peter with me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Over the moon. Absolutely fantastic. Really pleased. Well done, Peter. Thank you. <laughs> I love your reaction. Well Thank you. It's been an amazing day. I mean, when I, when I came, I was, all I wanted to do was to learn something new, and, and, and I've done that, so I, I'm, I'm really happy. Um, but on the other hand, disappointed. Any tips for Peter for Friday? Relax, enjoy, have fun. I mean, basically, just be yourself. Brilliant. Well Zuzalur. done. I think that Pete is definitely a um, team player. Uh, he listens. I think it should be fun. Yeah. Tomorrow on Yes Chef. Three more home cooks go all out to impress top chef Paul Ainsworth. And I want to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, I want to <laughs> win again. It's the chance for them to work alongside the best in the business, but only one could become their partner in the Friday final. <laughs>